I'm Jack Penning. I think uh, I can uh, wave your hand at everybody because uh, nobody's interested in this talk anyway. <laughs> so, okay. Um, what I'm going to tell you is uh, about CSS, the Control System Studio, which is a platform for control system management. We uh, developed at DAISY. And so I have to tell you something about uh, the domain at first because uh, I'm in the track of building industry solutions. So um, this is the overview. I have, I think, about 30 slides, which is uh, quite more like a movie when we think of 25 minutes. Um, I was, uh, I'm coming from a very, very crowded room where Emily Young told something about OSGI uh, best practices, and this is uh, quite a difference. Um, OK, about the domain, I want to tell you about the collaboration, because we are mostly here to present uh, the application and uh, tell about the collaboration we already are uh, running. Uh, uh, of course, I have to tell you about the application itself and what Eclipse helps us, but I don't think this is, uh, I don't want to get it too boring. Okay, about the domain. I'm coming from DAISY in Hamburg. It's a, a physical research institute. M probably you have heard the word DAISY before. It's not pronounced DAISY, but Deutsches Elektronen Synchrotron. Uh, so it's called DAISY. Uh, and uh, like uh, these uh, large physics institutes uh, are, uh, it is quite large. It currently, uh, at DAISY, the XFAL is built. Uh, it's not only built by DAISY, but it's kind of an international collaboration which builds it. And uh, what is it all about? We have, um, DAISY is located in, uh, at the border of Hamburg and Barenfeld, it's about here. And we uh, recently digged a tunnel. Uh, it's about 3.5 kilometers long. And it uh, will uh, give room for a uh, uh, X-ray free electron laser. And this is a kind of very uh, specific device for uh, making uh, experiments for research of matter of structure, of uh, molecules forming and stuff like that. What are we going to do about this? Uh, I'm in the cryogenics control department. And the cryogenics are used because the cavities we are using to uh, accelerate the electrons are uh, uh, superconducting devices. So we have to uh, supply a lot of cold helium to cool them down to uh, 2 Kelvin, which is really cool. Um, this um, is just to give you an impression how, how big scale it is. But actually, what, we, uh, what I want to tell you about is what the cryogenics uh, department is uh, running, uh, what, which kind of software we are running. OK, um, when you uh, come to think of what the environment is, you see that there are two kinds of, of uh, notions uh, at, the, uh, at the diagram. We have, for example, XFAL. And there you see written Dukes, Tina, and Epix. You have Flash. You have Petra 3. XFAL, Flash, and Petra 3 are experiments. And Dukes, Tina, and Epix are control systems which are employed at DZ. We have different control systems. And that poses quite a problem. When I think, uh, when, I, when I use the term control system, what are we uh, talking about? And a little more structural detail, uh, or no, not detail, an overview. Um, we have, of course, down at the machine level, down at the facilities, we have devices like pumps or valves or stuff like that. We have sensors and we have actors. And on top of that sits the control system, which is the term uh, used in a, in a uh, narrow sense. And uh, we have PLCs, Speicherprogrammierbare Steuerung for the Germans around. And we have uh, something I'd like to call IOC, because in the uh, control system employed at uh, the cryogenics, we use the EPIX control system. And I'll come to that later. And there, the process control computers are called IOCs. On top of that sits um, uh, uh, a layer where we have uh, a lot of servers which are used for monitoring and uh, running the system. And of course, we have the operator consoles for uh, at least uh, allowing the humans to control. OK. Uh, we are not, uh, I will not talk about this layer and not about the middle layer, but I will talk about the things uh, that are, uh, have, have a green uh, color. OK, why did we manage to, or why did we choose to uh, engage in the Eclipse RCP business uh, in the first place? Uh, several years ago, we were faced with a situation um, 
that we had on top of the control system, the green layer, a lot of usually uh, X window based uh, applications which were uh, developed at different sites. They were uh, having their own look and feels, they were having a limited uh, possibility of data exchange, and uh, most notably, they had no way to integrate different control systems. This is, was just not a question of whether it is possible or not, but that was the situation we were faced with. So what did we do about it? What did we want to achieve? We wanted to have a consistent look and feel and to integrate our tools. Uh, and we have usability aspects. We wanted to integrate tools, but not having a, a desktop clouded with 20 views or so, but uh, to uh, be able to stay focused on the task at hand. Of course, we wanted interoperability for uh, tools that were developed at different sites and so on. Uh, and last but not least, we are not software developers in the first place, but we, are, we have a lot of physicists running around and writing tools, so we wanted to uh, concentrate on one technology to get all our jobs done. And, uh, yeah, well, you have to pay a price. Okay, what did we achieve? Um, we now we have CSS, which uh, has nothing to do with cascading style sheets, but with Control System Studio. And we have uh, a front end for control room operators up and running in our cryogenics control room and spreading around the easy. Uh, we have a tool for display development, which is the main part of it. We have a set of tools for development for the underlying control system, which happens to be Epix at our place. Uh, I'll show you a few screenshots afterwards where it is explained a little more. We can manage the low-level devices. We can have a declarative style of uh, using our process of, uh, of, of generating databases which describe the system. And we have a state machine language integrated into Epix which we can uh, edit and compile. We have an alarm management system, of course, which, which is the most uh, crucial part of it. Uh, usually the operator just sits down and waits for something to happen uh, if he's not cooling or warming up. Uh, so alarm management is quite crucial, but I won't go, I won't tell you anything about this. Uh, and we have a lot of headless servers around which are uh, used for monitoring the system. Okay. So this is what the domain is, uh, is about and what is the collaboration? How did we achieve this? It all began in the context of the Apex community, which is quite, uh, quite uh, uh, vivid. And uh, in 2006, the idea was born. There was some kind of kickoff meeting. I wasn't on board by that time, so I just uh, uh, know it from hearsay. <laughs> and um, what, what did we, uh, what, what was the idea? What, what was to be done in the first place? There was, uh, yes, we had to agree on some kind of uh, basic application designs, what the menus should look like and stuff like that. We had an, uh, decide about an initial set of core plugins, and I'll show you what, uh, what came out of it. And we had some kind of intention. Everybody said, yes, uh, we agree, we want to uh, achieve uh, something, so we want to go on. But there was no formalized uh, way of uh, getting all the collaborators together. Up to now, we have our repository on GitHub, <coughs> and we have a, oh, sorry, <coughs> and we have a, um, a lot of email traffic discussing one topic or the other, and that's uh, pretty much of the structure we have. Who is uh, uh, collaborating? Uh, well, when you think of Epix as uh, stemming from the uh, uh, physics background, it's no wonder that we have uh, uh, quite large physics research institutes collaborating. And perhaps you have heard of some of them. They are, those are the big players in the field. Okay, what did we achieve? What do we have in core? We have some kind of domain model, actually not just a single one, because if there is a problem, we would likely to have a fork, which uh, poses to be a problem. We have an access layer for different control systems, <coughs> which is, up to my knowledge, employed at Daisy and Diamond Light Source, and uh, the other uh, contributors use other access layers. We have uh, the usual stuff, which is uh, pretty boring, so I skip this. Okay, and now I'll show you a few screenshots what uh, CSS apps actually do. We have uh, a CSS app called Island. It's um, 
mainly used as a teaser because island means just think of you are sitting on an island and you have no server context around so it should be up and running and give you an idea of what it's all about so that is uh, therefore it is you can make use of simulated process variables meaning the stuff in the field doing something uh, or you can use so-called uh, soft IOCs which give you a more uh, more integrated way Okay, you can download CSS Island from the DAISY site, and if you have any problems of firing it up, uh, my colleague Jan and I will be happy to answer you within a week or so. Because currently we are building XFAL, and this is our main topic, and bug fixing on CSS is currently not our main topic. So we are looking for collaborators. Did I mention this? Okay. What are the main tools of Apex and how do they, uh, of, of uh, CSS and how do they look like? Uh, this is the uh, screenshot from the uh, well macro-based system of generating Apex databases. Uh, you can define prototypes and uh, generate instances while uh, putting values to the parameters and so generating quite large databases. When you have uh, an IOC, a process control computer, it will run about several dozens up to a few hundred uh, process variables so you can think uh, when you edit a file which describes this this is quite some task and this helps us a lot um, on the uh, epics framework they are running uh, uh, you are able to run a state machine uh, so you have uh, some way of defining it and we have an editor for this and on Linux machines it even uh, integrates a compiler. We are making use of the typical things you will expect there, an outline and a problem view and stuff like that. Okay, well, the, one of the uh, uh, not related to epics, the interesting parts not related to epics is the uh, Synoptic Display Studio, SDS as we have to call it. This is um, a view of the editor, which gives you an idea of what it's about. We have uh, uh, the editor, which allows you to drag widgets on it and interconnect them and draw some fancy uh, setup, which will tell the operator where he is. And of course, we have properties for the widgets and to uh, combining it all together. Um, when it runs, it will give the operator uh, an impression like this. We have virtually hundreds of displays which uh, describe all parts of the, of the whole facility. Uh, this is one of the, uh, the main parts of the system. Here you can see uh, the uh, compressors of lane two, but uh, you're probably not interested in our uh, current development. Okay, um, yeah, maybe I should say a few things more. You, here you can see that the uh, high pressure compressor has an interesting problem, uh, six bar in, seven bar out, it, it doesn't match. And we have a few lines crossed out because the uh, whole facility is under massive rework to integra integrate the parts needed for the XFAL. Okay, of course we have apps for monitoring alarms. There are two basic tools for that. First one is tree-based. I made a simple screenshot from a, uh, an example, not a running system, because uh, I wanted to explain something. The alarm tree is something where the, uh, any individual operator is allowed to configure it uh, uh, according to his needs. Um, you have um, a way of integrating alarms. You have a process variable which can generate one, and you have the possibility of building components which integrate one and show you what is the most prominent alarm for this aggregate. This is uh, quite useful for mapping to facilities, and this is quite useful for mapping to states the, uh, the facility currently runs in, because it is a difference whether you are cooling down or whether you are warming up. Okay, of course, we have something like a table which is sorted to severity or anything else you like. Uh, this is uh, in the cryogenic control room, the most prominent tool. They have it uh, on, a, on a very large display at a prominent place with big letters, so everybody who comes in uh, is uh, forced to look at it. Of course, we have a plugin which uh, manages to uh, display trends in a graphical form. And this, uh, I didn't mention the whole system, is backed by an archive system which allows you to retrieve data from different archive sources. There is a, uh, an abstraction here for different archive sources which you can connect. Okay. Um, what is crucial but not very uh, 
graphical, not very uh, 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 impressive, is that we are uh, about to monitor our uh, server environment and we use a uh, uh, um, uh, kind of chat protocol for this. A headless server uh, connects to a uh, chat server. A headless server is one of those nice little servers that uh, monitor our applications. It connects there and uh, most prominent is the interconnection server which is kind of a data concentrator and uh, monitor for the IOCs and we have two of them running side by side as you might see at the highlighted line or the one above. Uh, why do we have them? Because the whole system is configured uh, redundantly. We have each and everything, power lines, network traffic, service and services are uh, uh, redundant, con configured redundantly because we have to maintain 25-7 um, operation. Okay, what do we do with these? Uh, in the context view we are able to send commands and listen to what the monitors uh, tell us. Okay, and we do have a lot of servers around uh, and this gives uh, uh, an impression of what we uh, do on uh, why we call CSS a platform because uh, when you take a look at this, in light blue you see the service you might expect uh, nearly everywhere. In uh, light green we have stuff that is uh, those are headless applications built on top of the CSS platform. I told you that I won't tell you something about the alarm management or the archive, but I already told you about the interconnection server. Okay, so mm, I think I skipped this one. I'm just whining a bit about all the trouble we have because it has to be redundant. Okay, and how does Eclipse help us with all those stuff? Well, First of all, uh, this is a diagram of a software architecture, a layered architecture, pretty much of what you uh, would expect. Of course, we have Java and Eclipse and the UI part separated from the parts which are allowed to generate headless applications. Uh, a little more uh, domain related, we have again uh, a description of a layered architecture. Uh, here you can see uh, how we manage to be able to integrate different um, control systems. We have something called the data abstraction layer, DAL. My finger is long enough, but in this direction. And there are several plugins which allow to incorporate our different control systems. Um, prominent one under construction right now is the archive replay, which will allow us to run SDS displays with uh, historical data, which is quite useful when you have to uh, look back what happened in kind of some accident or some, some failure or so. Uh, we are, this is under construction right now. Okay, this, is, uh, this diagram is not uh, very much related to Eclipse, but what I, I was uh, telling you that I'm going to tell something about what Eclipse helps us, and this is more sort of like this. When we program a domain, we have some kind of a domain architecture. The conceptual entities are uh, written at the, uh, from when you look at it, at the left side. The examples are on the right side. We have some kind of view, an alarm tree, for example, which uh, employs an acknowledge service, which uh, manages the, uh, the operator clicks when they say, okay, uh, there is an alarm and I will take care of it. And what does it work upon about some on some domain object, for example, an alarm? Okay, and what Eclipse really helps us is uh, maybe I can skip that, I can back to this. It gives us a sound module architecture. We have construction entities like bundles and we have plugins and we have fragments and stuff like that. And we have to make up a kind of architectural pattern, how our application has to look like. So we can integrate all the parts we, uh, we uh, get together. And this is something we, are, um, we have to struggle with because uh, there's kind of steep learning curve for every developer, but when we achieve this, uh, it helps us a lot because you can easily navigate and easily glue together the applications. So in the first place, what we had to do, and we didn't uh, find out in the very first place, that we have to find some mapping from the concep conceptual entities uh, to the construction level. I don't want to explain this in detail. There's not the time, and it's, of course, it's a, very, it's a big topic on its own, but uh, we have to uh, think about that. Okay, so what do we um, 
use for deployment. Well, now it comes to something, I think it's, it's all the boring stuff because every one of you, who is not developing Eclipse RCP? I thought so. So this is what you would pretty much expect. We are doing what everybody does. We are using features to keeping parts of some domain together. We have a feature for SDS, a feature for the database creation tool, a feature for the SNL tool, and stuff like that. So we can um, very easily uh, glue together the parts which allow us to uh, deliver tailored apps. Um, of course, we use P2 for the online updates, and uh, Jan is the poor guy who manages the build. <laughs> so we are using, of course, PDE build with uh, Hudson, or Hudson's now called Jenkins, isn't it? Okay, so that's what you would pretty much expect. And here it goes, uh, goes on. The usability aspects are uh, taking care of the usual stuff, uh, like perspectives to keep you focused, like views and editors. And a lot of RPs, of course, GEF we use for the SDS development. We have preference and help, uh, like everybody uh, does. Okay. So, why am I telling you all this? What are we going to do? Now, we are here because we want to take a look into Eclipse 4, and I'm uh, very much satisfied, especially with the dependency injection-based approach, so approach, so we will have a, a more a clear uh, 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 way of uh, uh, designing tests. This is uh, my, my, uh, uh, the most important thing. And we want to find out how to integrate BERT because currently we are running the 3.7 platform and we have trouble in to integrate BERT there because we are, well, how do, you, how do you say, we just adjusted the platform a little bit which uh, uh, disables us to integrate BERT. Uh, if we didn't do this nonsense, we would have easily made a click and it would have been integrated, but we managed to fail there. Okay, so we have to do something, but this can be done, of course. And so, now uh, I think this is the, the last but one slide. We are interested in finding collaborators. If there's anybody around who is interested in some uh, kind of software like that, um, he, would, uh, he is welcome to send us an email, download CSS Island and find out if he can use it at all. And there is uh, our friend Philip. Just wave your hand. <laughs> Philip uh, just uh, made a talk about Open Chrome. And he's looking also for uh, partners for collaborators. So I think in, is the, is the uh, location and time correct? In Seminarräume 1 bis 3, at the evening at uh, 8 p.m., uh, we will meet and we will uh, be able to talk and we will find out if there is any use in founding, uh, uh, founding uh, laying the foundation to something like the science-related industrial working group. Where, where will we benefit from it? Because simply there will be collaborators and we will be forced to set up a more rigid process of collaborating because as I told you now it's all very, very, uh, mm, mm, what do you call this, it's moving. Uh, and uh, we can get better there, I think. So you are all uh, invited. Okay. Yes, I'm done. Okay. CSS.desi.de, you will find out about. Um, and what do you think? Any questions? I'm finished. Uh, actually, it works like this. Um, we have a few main committers, and we have one single common build product, which we run each time there is a commit. We have a test source, uh, a, a testing suite, and of course, everyone is uh, forced to use it. If he doesn't, well, we have run into problems, and that's the way it is. So this is one of my, my uh, uh, um, main goals, to set up a more rigid process there. So, and how do we uh, put up with a lot of people? Actually, it, is, it works like this. Uh, we had uh, contributions from ITER, and the ITER project uh, sent their contributions to uh, the American guys from Brooklyn.
Haven, and they were reviewing it and integrating it. It wasn't so much that it couldn't be done. Of course, they are having a lot of plugins running on their own, but nobody cares about it. They run it on their own. We have it at the, op of course, it's open source. We have it in the repo, and everybody can take a look at it, but I don't care about the ETA uh, tools. So that's just like it is. Mm. That's uh, <laughs> not, not the best situation. Okay. Okay, any more questions? Okay, thank you.